It's your favorite gold miner, prospector, and geologist, Jeff Williams. And today, we're gonna be hunting into these canyons looking for another lost waterfall of gold. Because I figure if there's one, there's gotta be more. This looks like the perfect place because it's not far from the original one that we found. So I'm gonna take you up into the mountains here. We're on foot and I'm gonna teach you some geology on the way up here. And if we're lucky, we might just run into another waterfall filled with gold nuggets. So you know what I'm gonna say, us. So come on, let's go. Now we recently got a whole bunch of rainfall and I figured now's the perfect time to go looking for another lost waterfall of gold. And we've been looking in these canyons for about two weeks now. And you can see I got water right up there. So the geology looks right. I got black sand everywhere. And if we're lucky, we might be able to find another one. Maybe even more gold in this one. Maybe see some bighorn sheep too. All right, let's get on up in the canyon. Because I got to have that gold. And I know you got to have that gold. So let's get on it. on top of a, a huge pluton right now. I'm not gonna tell you which one because you'll know exactly where I'm at. But it is a huge pluton. And there's gobs and gobs of black sand coming out of that granitic rock. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a cave way up there on the top of that, that ridge. Now I'm curious, should I go hiking up there or should I keep what's at the end of this? Man, decisions, decisions. The uh, Paiutes used to live in this area, so there's a lot of Indian caves. So if I can get to one quick, we'll hit it. But in the meantime, I'm headed up this way. Oh, my first sign. Somebody had a fireplace up here long ago. That means there's something up here and they had to stay the night. Hopefully that's a good indicator that there's something up further. So we're gonna keep going up. Ooh, but that wind's coming down out of the canyon. And there's snow on the mountains. We're gonna hurry for that snow drop. Wow, you see that up there on the face? That's a sill running across, and I got a dike cutting up through it. Now, if I had to guess, the dike was formed after the sill. And it looks like I found a small fissure running almost vertical you see that and it fractured it apart except for that one little area you see where it did not swell it out so that's a classic example of pinch and swell so you've got the dike coming down and then it pinches through that small fissure which is the original fissure and then it comes down and swells out again and then of course you've got another dike that's traveling upward up to the surface but this is this is really amazing because it gives a great illustration of how you have dikes and sills and how the, the sills can be created by dikes or the dikes can be created by sills. All right, let's keep moving on. There's another sill right there, see it? Isn't that cool? The way these are created sometimes is what's called lateral secretion. Basically, if there's a small fissure, just big enough for any material to get in there, that material will be injected into it from either another dike or a sill. And when it travels sideways, this, they call it lateral secretion. It literally will force its way in. And that's how you can have sills out that pinch on both sides. Because a lot of geologists for years couldn't figure out, especially in the mother low country, how did, the, how did these sills get in place? Or some of these quartz veins that are in the, the black slate. Well, they later determined that it was through a process called fault hydraulicing and lateral secretion. So when the ground starts to shift and move, it opens up little fissures and enough pressure will shoot up, get in there into these little tiny areas and then fill the void, spread it, and that'll be as far as it can go because the fissure or fracture doesn't go any further. So they call it lateral secretion. I can actually look at the different bedding planes of all the sediment material that's been coming down here. And I don't see anything that basically gets me excited. So I'm hoping as we get up further, we start to see indicators like black sand, types of quartz, which is referred to as slope. And I figured this canyon's got to have at least one or two waterfalls in it, either coming off a tributary or at the very head. So hopefully we find something. Oh, I got my first waterfall. Got my first waterfall. Look at that. 
Oh, and I got caves everywhere. Look at that. Caves everywhere. There's the waterfall right there. You see it? You see it? Oh man, this is some tough country. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Nice. Okay, let's get up in there and take a look. Look at that. Look at that. Got a nice pocket here. This would be a good place to sample right here. Nice place to sample. Whew. Oh man, I tell you, after the rain, a lot of these rocks are slippery. See what I mean? Look at this water. Another great example right there of parallel veins. You see them? They're all running parallel. And look at this one. This one right here, the little tiny one. So what has happened is because of hydraulic fracturing and because of lateral secretion, you got this little tiny one on the side. It looks like it came from nowhere. That's why a lot of times you can have these big veins that are very rich and everybody thinks they're tapped out because they've mined them all. Well, if you were just to do a cross cut left or right, you might be able to tap into one of these things. Because a lot of times the parallel veins don't daylight. <sighs> wow, beautiful country, but it just goes on forever. Oh, look, 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 look. See the black sand? Oh, it's getting really thick now. That's a good sign. But this canyon just goes on and on forever. It looks like it's getting muddier too. Beautiful country up in here, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. See where I'm going? That is absolutely gorgeous. I don't think anybody's been up here in a long, long time. Look at that. Oh, you know, it's getting narrow. That's a pinch point right there. And look at that. Huge waterfall. See all the rocks down below? That's perfect. And look at this. Look at all this black sand. Just gobs and gobs of it. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at all that black sand. Oh, you know I'm getting close. You know I'm getting close. Oh, and it's getting cold, too. Oh, gobs of black sand. Look at this. Absolutely amazing. The temperature just dropped like 10 degrees oh it's cold back in here. i'm glad i got my jacket on and there's snow up on the mountains oh look at this look at this isn't this gorgeous this is perfect see how narrow the canyon's getting and look at this see you can see these veins right here this is a good example why you see this so there's a, another fault right here and this vein has jogged to the left and you see that a lot with mining companies who are chasing a vein down like this one and they're going down and all of a sudden boop it disappears why because there's a fault here and it's jogged the veins off to the left or the right see that so when they get to the bottom of the vein they're like hey where did the heck did the vein go well they have to do a cross cut left or right or to keep dropping down and sometimes the fault will actually jog this vein over several hundred feet sometimes hundreds of meters so they're hard to find but i wanted you to see that it's a classic example and you can see some more evidence of that and this one here where this little tiny fissure opens up into this guy and that is how you get pinch and swell on a lot of your vein structures whether it's mesothermal or epithermal i know it's got to be up here somewhere Oh, look at this hard pack. Look at this. Look at that. That's all hard pack or hard pan as they call it. That's great to sample off of. Oh, that's fantastic. Look, I got hydrothermal alteration up here on the wall. You see that? That's perfect. And I must have some water seepage here. Look at this right here. And this is what I've been looking for. This is what I was looking for. Look, see the waterfall? See the waterfall? Look at this, look at this. 
Now that's a waterfall. Now I know it's not very big, but look, look inside. Oh yeah. Now I was hoping to have a pool of water here so I could pan, sample pan. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get up there. I guess I could just wedge myself in there. This is fantastic. Look at this. And look at the gravels. Gravels are all the way up there on the canyon wall. And the gravels are all the way up there, 30 feet. This is a perfect place to sample because all the gold would have got caught right in here. But it's gonna be hard for me to sample without any water. And see the root systems right in here. I don't know where they're coming from. It goes all the way up about 30 feet. Here's another example here. You can see the water. See the gravels and the sand way up there. About 30 feet. Jeez. And look at this. This is what you're looking for. See all these heavy gravels? That is what you're sampling. Remember, flow sand isn't going to have hardly any gold in it. It's going to take a lot of water pressure to move stones like that. So remember, big stones, big gold. Little stones, little gold. You interpret that the way you like. And this would be a good place to sample right up in here behind this rock. Look at this alteration right here. This, this thing's been altered. And you can see where the iron's coming from too. All right, I'm gonna try to pull some samples from him, but I don't really have much water to play with. And if you like today's video, you better smash that like button, smash it hard. And if you wanna see more videos on us finding lost waterfalls of gold, just watch this video right here. And I'll see you on the next video.